Hey, YouTube Picklers, welcome to episode 15 of our podcast, Pickleball Therapy, podcast that's focused on your improvement as a pickleball player, trying to bring your information that can help you improve as a player. In this series, we're actually focusing, focusing on mental and emotional training, and what we're focusing on here is the mental side of the game, a really important side of the game. This is the last installment of our interview with Coach Peter Scales, or Dr. Peter Scales, who goes by Coach Pete. He's a psychologist and also a, a tennis coach. He spent a lot of time thinking about these issues uh, from mental training standpoint and emotional training standpoint. And so we're going to jump into the last episode or the last part of our interview with, with Coach Pete. If you haven't listened to the prior episodes, please go back and listen to those. There's a lot of really good information in there to help you contextualize the game a little better and also just you know become a, a more comfortable and confident player on the court. Also help you just as a human being as it has me. Before we jump into the last part of the interview, I cannot recommend highly enough uh, Coach Pete's book, Mental and Emotional Training, Compete, Learn, Honor. You can find it on Amazon. I read it. It's an amazing, uh, good book. It, it'll really help you out. Check it out. Let's get into it. You'd like to help your friend or family member learn how to play pickleball, but how? Now it's easy. Pick up a copy of Play Pickleball, A Beginner's Guide, it's the most complete guide to playing pickleball. Available as a digital download or in hard copy at intopickle.com or at Amazon. Let's keep growing the sport. That reminds me of, of, of something you recommended in your book, which is it was basically like a, like thinking when you practice so that you can flow during the game or, or not have to think as much when you're actually in a in a competitive tournament type of setting. And so, you know, basically it's 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 applying you know, thought process and really focusing on different aspects of the game that you can work on while you're in practice sessions, or, you know, open play, rec play, whatever it is, but they're practice sessions so that when you go out and play a, a, a game that has, you know, a tournament or something like that, that you don't have to do that during the tournament. Right. Exactly. That, that, that's it. I mean, it's all that uh, by doing all the reps, the myelin increases in the brain and it just makes everything happen faster. Yep. So that it doesn't seem like you're thinking. You're just your mind body are more connected and you're just acting more with mind and body as one rather than the mind thinking something and it taking a second for the body to react. A second is too long. <laughs> you know? Right. Especially if you're up all up at the net. That ball's going really fast. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm actually plug plug two types of uh specific uh practice uh uh techniques that people can use uh, that basically, you know, two things that we do here is we will sometimes we'll practice with timeouts. Uh, we'll, we'll basically announce we have, we each have two timeouts that'll allow you to work on the use of timeouts. And then the other thing that we do is we play a reasonable number of 15 point games because, you know, there's only one team in a tournament that's not going to play at least one 15 point game. And, you know, a 15 point game and 11 point game are very different animals. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you go in, if all you've played is 11 point games your whole life and then all of a sudden you have to play a 15, uh, you know, being being up, you know, 10, six in a 15 point game is not the same as 10, six and 11 point game. So, you know, it, it's a it's a it's like running a 1500 meter instead of running a 400 meter. And it's just it requires different skills. And, and if you've never played it before, it's it's uh, you're doing yourself a real disservice if you play tournaments. Coach, I'd like to talk about a couple of techniques that you uh, mentioned in your book that uh, I found really helpful. I mean, I found the whole book helpful, but these were things that just jumped out at me. And one of them, it's actually one of the the concepts that I'm trying to uh, bring into my game. Uh, since I read your book, I've been out there and I've actually been implementing this into my practice routines where I'm trying to remind myself to do this. And and as we mentioned earlier about, you know, the, the habit forming, it's not a habit with me yet. So it actually takes effort. You know, it's not natural for me to, to do this. And specifically, uh, you know, I, I uh, you know, I had heard from, you know, other interviews and other things, you know, other other players that that, we, you know, you always expect the ball to come back. But I really liked what you added to it, which is um, that not just expect it to come back, but expect it to be a, a difficult shot. And, you know, what it reminds me of is uh, the um, and it, it happens countless times. Uh, it's happened to me. It's happened to my opponents when, you know, there's one of those rallies where one team is clearly in charge of what's happening, you know, slamming balls, moving balls around, just, just the other team is running around just trying to stay alive. And all of a sudden that team, uh, you know, the, the put away team or the teams in control hits a really nice shot. The other team somehow gets a paddle on it, right? Nobody knows how exactly it happened. And that ball comes back, 
you know, maybe like a like six inches or a foot over the net and and it's coming back. And and what ends up happening is the the team that was in control just hits it into the net. And I don't have scientific, you know, no, I don't have a, like a statistic, right? But anecdotally, it seems to happen fairly frequently. And and I think it's a it seems to be a um, uh, you know not really a not expecting it to come back and b not expecting it to be kind of difficult. And what I wanted to focus on was your your advice, as I understood it, was one way to to um, to deal with that. But also, I think a, a way to to kind of uh, calm your mind when you're playing is. And you may not have presented it quite like this, but you know what the way I understood it was the concept of the hit bounce split. Where basically, you know, you're 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 reciting that every time. Can you explain that a little bit, and maybe talk a little bit about the uh, the ball coming back? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, there's obvious reasons for thinking that the ball should come back to you, <laughs> so that you're not surprised, so that you're ready. Uh, all of us have done that. What you just described. I mean, we hit uh, honestly a pretty decent shot, and we're admiring our shot at at some level. And the opponent is scrambling and while we're admiring and poof, there we go. They either hit a winner or they hit a shot we're late on and hit it into the net or spray it long or whatever. Um, but the tough shot part is, um, is really helpful because no matter what quality of shot you hit, the assumption always has to be that the opponent is going to hit a really good shot back. And so you can't let down until that ball is bounced twice. You know, then the point's over. But until then, that point's alive. So you're constantly, you know, moving in the direction of the point of contact, moving to cut the, you know, to the middle of the angle that your opponent has to the reply. You're, you're constantly um, in that flow until the ball bounces twice. That's your physical sense of signal that the point's over. Until then, you're, you're not thinking. You're not admiring. You're not judging your shot, you're not evaluating it. You're simply flowing and, and keeping your mind focused on, on being in position for the likely reply that your opponent is, is going to make. So you're busy doing that. And if you're busy doing that, then you can't be surprised. You know, you, you might still lose the point, but it won't be because you were surprised. <laughs> um, and, and so the, the way, one of the ways you can maintain your focus like that during a rally when it's starting to uh, go is split bounce hit and split refers to split step so little little hop off the ground as your opponent's making contact with the ball and in that split second you're judging where that ball's going and then you're going to land and push off in the direction you need to go to intercept the ball right after that opponent hits the ball unless you're hitting a volley, it's going to bounce on your side. So you say bounce. And then when you hit it, you say hit. And it sounds really elementary and it works wonders to recover your focus. Um, in practice, you can say it out loud or just let your partners, your playing partners know that you're working on this and you'd like to say it out loud if they don't mind, um, you know, because it can be distracting. And then you get good at it so that you're saying it to yourself, you know, split, bounce, hit. And that focuses you on the movement of the ball, on seeing the ball early, which I mentioned before, and that will make you faster just by seeing the ball early. Uh, you're splitting when you see the opponent hit the ball, actually make contact with the paddle and then bounce and you're hitting and you just keep repeating this as the rally goes on. So you're, you're, senses are, are focused solely on split bounce hit and you're letting everything else just take over instinctively as to where you're going to hit it you know how you're going to move you're not thinking about that you're just split bounce hit and everything else is just automatic yeah this and is that something that i'm going to i'm going to definitely bring into my game coach i think it's a uh you know i i think the game has a cadence to it like a rhythm right um, yeah. and, and I actually have someone, sometimes I have my players, um, close their eyes while I dink with, with another player, you know, and, and it's amazing. They can hear the rhythm of the, of the, of the, of the hitting, right. The, the rhythm. And then, it, and then I'll rush, I'll hit a little faster and, and they, they get bothered by that. They're like, it doesn't sound right. So to me, this is, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's, it's, it's along the same lines, which is, you know, there's a rhythm to the ball bouncing. The other team hit it. 
it bounces. I hit it like that, you know, and it's just, it just really helps you, I think, uh, focus on the moment and also, uh, understand the cadence of the dance that you're dancing with your, with your opponent. So it, it does. And I mean, the bounce hit has been around forever. I mean, Timothy Galway wrote about that in the inner game of tennis, you know, decades ago, I've added split uh, because I think the split step is probably one of the least practiced and most fundamental things in court sports. <laughs> Agreed. You know, players are standing there like statues and then expecting that they can go from zero to 60, um, you know, from this statue like position. And I try and tell them the laws of physics right. are, you know, an object in motion is likely to stay in motion, object in rest likely to stay at rest. So what's the, what's the moral of that story? It's easier to move if you're already moving. So yeah, the split step, really important. And again, it, it's not, it, it's a technical aspect of the game, the split step, but if you do it properly and you do it in the, in the sequence of the focus on split bounce hit, it becomes an added mental and emotional habit that keeps your mind from wandering and keeps you focused in the here and now. Be here now, right now. It really helps. That, that segues uh, greatly, Coach, to the last question I have for you, and I appreciate your time today. The, the last question I have for you is, is actually a, a, a question posed to me by a, a, a student, and it was fascinating. Once he, once he expressed it to me, I, it, was, it was a really interesting way to kind of make me think about it and 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 perhaps there's there's some advice you can provide and the way the way he explained it is like this he says you know he loses focus sometimes when he's out there playing on on a particular uh rally or a series of you know consecutive rallies he'll lose focus and the way he explained it was you know I, he said listen i understand that i'm supposed to be paying attention i'm supposed to be focused and in the moment and things like that but he said he said i'm playing three hours, right? And I did some rough math. So three hours, uh, you know, uh, uh, some assumptions I made, but it's, we. I'm going to call it a thousand shots in that session he's going to hit, right? And mm -hmm. so he's hitting a thousand shots in a three hour period. And say he's playing in the second game of the session, uh, you know, and he's hitting the fourth, he's in the fourth rally of the second game. Well, he, I mean, in the back of his mind, he knows it doesn't matter because there's another game starting in eight minutes or six minutes, man, how long this game takes, right? And so it's kind of like the, the continuity of it uh, perhaps is, is the way I, I'm paraphrasing it, but the continuity of it and just the, the repetition and the length of, of play cr creates challenges in his mind to his ability to focus on the, you know, the fourth shot of the, or the fourth rally of the second game, say. So is there anything that, that you think players can do to, um, you know, I, I think that the hit bounce split is certainly one way to do it because if you're doing that all the time, you, you, you know, if you're just saying that in your mind, you have to be in the moment, right? Because you have to be recognizing what's happening. But is there is there anything else that they might be able to do to help maintain focus over stretches of three hour or four hour sessions? Well, um, I mean, for starters, um, a three, four hour session may not uh, be so productive. Um, you know, human beings have a limit to how much they can learn, which is why it's not good when coaches are trying to teach and new things at, at the same time to a student. Um, in the same way, you know, um, staying completely focused for three or four hours is probably not something that most most people can do. Uh, even the pros don't do it when, you know, when you're playing a five set men's tennis match at US Open this week, um, they can't stay focused the entire time. And whether it's a three or four hour or, you know, a 30, 40 minute, uh, you're going to have ups and downs in focus. And so I think before before I mention a couple of other things, the, the first and most important thing is name that you're losing focus. A accept the fact that you're going to lose focus sometimes and you're still okay. You're still a worthwhile person. Um, and, and just notice, notice it. You know, part of the mindfulness of, of being in the present is, is just noticing what's happening without judging it. Right. And so, ah, OK, I'm, I'm losing focus right now. I've lost focus. Say it to yourself. Accept it. And, and that takes away a lot of the energy instead of immediately fighting it uh, as if it's a wrong thing. It, it's it's going to happen. It, it's just like when you feel pressure. Right. Um, if you feel pressure, it's a big match. 
and you know you've got a chance to close it out you're feeling pressure well you know you're supposed to feel pressure you care about what's happening it's important to you it has meaning to you if you didn't feel pressure if you if you didn't lose focus occasionally um you wouldn't be human so first thing is be good to yourself be kind to yourself and accept that it's going to happen just naming it as happening will help you get back into focus the other thing you can do is you've got a Q, your Q word uh, that you created for your between points routine. The word you use to focus, whether it's that phrase, Tony, that you mentioned earlier about now what? Um, or some of my players over the years have, have come up with go. And that means get ready to go for the next point. I'm refocusing now. That works for them. It, it means all this paragraph of things in one word. Um, so have a word. The word that you use between points to get your focus back is the same word that you can use at any point when you realize you've named it. Hey, I'm losing focus. Go. And then you can do the, the bounce or the split bounce hit. Um, you can also do um, my colleague in tennis, Sterling Strother, um, has come up with something that I use a lot. I really like it. Uh, called one two reset and particularly in a longer rally this will help build up shot tolerance um, and keep your focus you hit one stroke that's one you hit your next stroke that's two then you say reset third stroke you hit is one fourth stroke is two reset so you're constantly only having to focus on hitting two strokes in a row then you're resetting. You're, you're never, it, it helps you get away from the, the sense that some folks can have of, uh, uh oh, I'm in the longest rally I've been in all summer. Right. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to miss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that team is not missing or, or that person on the other side of the net, you know, she's, she's just like a wall. Yeah. And I don't know if I can last. And that's, you know, the moment when you start going for a shot you don't own or it's an inopportune moment, poor shot selection. Um, you try to do something you shouldn't do at that moment. So one, two reset uh, really helps. I've seen it work wonders for players um, who get nervous in long rallies or who lose focus. So that combination with the split bounce hit and simply naming, you know, um, I'm losing focus. Or when you get nervous and I'm feeling nervous. And by saying it and ex okay, okay, that's normal. That's normal. That's okay. Yeah. And then we move on. That's some really, really good stuff, coach. And, and, uh, coach, I really appreciate, I mean, the, the advice you've given us, the, the is invaluable. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm hopeful that as many pickleball players as possible will have an opportunity to, to hear your words in this podcast. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give a link to your book, uh, down below because I think it's, it's so valuable, uh, for, you know, players, I, I, you know, I get asked questions about technique, you know, from time to time, but I would say uh, a good 70, 80% of the questions and, and the comments I receive from players involve the mental part of the game, uh, you know, involve, you know, uh, not being comfortable on the court, involve focus, like we just talked about, things like that. So I, I really appreciate uh, your time today. And I also want to thank you just for you know, putting the book together. I, I, you know, I, we were talking earlier, you know, I, I, I wrote a book, so I know the amount of work that's involved in that. So I appreciate you, uh, you know, giving of yourself by, by taking the time to put that book together. And, uh, and also just the amount of time that you've given to thinking about these subjects and to, and to really, um, you know, honing your, your, your craft and your, and your, your knowledge base in this area is, is uh, really, really appreciated coach. Well, thanks a lot, Tony. Love what you're doing on the podcast and your and you're coaching courses and uh, you're doing great stuff for the pickleball community. And uh, again, glad, glad to be here with you today. Thank you, coach. That's our interview with coach Pete. I hope you got as much out of it as I did. Uh, just reading the book, listening to coach Pete, uh, really helping me uh, focus and ground myself when I'm out there on the pickleball court, uh, you know, take it relatively seriously in terms of, you know, wanting to perform as best I can, wanting to, to honor the game, to learn about it and to compete as best I can, but also having some context about 
you know, why I'm out there, uh, that the fact that we're all human beings, we're all going to make errors, we're all going to have pop-ups, no matter how much we work at the game. And just understanding that that's part of the, part of the process and part of the sort of the whole package that you get when you play pickleball. If you enjoyed this week's podcast, share it with your friends. Remember, if you liked it, they likely will too. Join us next week as we continue our podcast with a focus on pickleball improvement and making you the best pickleball player you can be. Stay safe out there.